blowing up, bonking, hitting the wall, whatever you want to call it. There is no shortage of this happening in endurance sports. And trust me, from experience, it is brutal. And it's something you never want to experience. There is a common misconception, though, that bonking is just an intense tiredness that many people actually suffer from. And this couldn't be further away from the truth. In simple terms, bonking is when your body completely runs out of energy and has no fuel left in the tank. This fuel is glycogen. And to stop this from happening, you will see athletes take on nutrition, whether this being gels, solids, or liquids that provide you with an energy source. Now, failure to keep everything topped up leads to major problems, as you're about to see, with ultimately your body shutting itself down to prevent long-term damage. One of the most famous examples of this was Johnny Brownlee at the World Triathlon Series event in Cozumel, Mexico, where he well and truly bonked and hit the wall, and was carried over the finish line by his brother, Alistair, who sacrificed his race to help him. Once it hits you, it's already too late, and your body is in shutdown mode, so to speak. You'll often go through confusion, disorientation, and fatigue alongside this. The heat in Cozumel definitely will have exacerbated this situation, though, and been a big contributing factor to this. In fact, it's quite possible that Johnny simply underhydrated and was just in an extreme fluid deficit, where he was simply losing more liquid through sweat than he was replacing. Either way, though, his body shut down, causing him to collapse. You'll also see that Johnny has gone extremely pale, and doesn't actually know what's going on around him. It's almost as if he was drunk. Now, it's this symptom that really stops you from going on, as you have zero awareness and no control of the situation. Another great example of this is Sarah True at Ironman Frankfurt, where there were record-breakingly high temperatures, but towards the end of a race, she lost all control, started swaying all over the place, and ultimately collapsed, where she had to be carried off. In Ironman racing, the perfect conditions for bonking are basically provided to you, with people racing for up to 17 hours at a time. That's pretty much the entire day and most of the night, with the world's best still taking eight hours. So you're out there for a long, long period of time, with ultimately your body in one slow decline. The Notorious Crawl in 1997 from Welsh and Ingram, I think that's how you pronounce her name anyway, is probably the most epic example of this happening in triathlon, although there are a few mega examples in the marathon that I'll cover shortly. In all fairness though, it's not something actually cool that you want to go through, and can, in a lot of cases, be really dangerous. Now, with the two of these ladies losing function of their legs, they had no other option but to crawl to the line. They physically didn't have the energy reserves in their body at this point to move their legs, and this, to me, has got to be the epitome of pushing your body to the limit. It's also very surprising, though, that they're actually cognitively aware at this point, as often mental shutdown, so to speak, comes alongside the physical collapse. For me, though, there are some even more brutal examples in the marathon. The Brazilian Nieto, I think I think that's how you pronounce his name, although I may be wrong. At the New York Marathon this year, just a few weeks back, collapsed and lay there, alone on the floor, unable to move, due to severe muscle fatigue and bodily shutdown. He just watched as the rest of the field pass by, and then got medically evacuated off the road. He clocked two of the fastest ever mile splits ever recorded within a marathon, of 4 minutes 20 and 4 minutes 17. Like, wow, that is just incredible and insane. And honestly, no normal person could run at that pace for literally a minute. So to clock those times within a marathon is just, yeah, mind-bogglingly amazing. But no wonder he collapsed. It was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Although sometimes you've got to take really big risks to win big races. This was also an hour and 40 in when he did collapse, so he did incredibly well just to make it this far at such a fast pace. And finally, Lance Armstrong. You've all probably heard of the guy. He's a specimen of a human being, although, yes, he was done for doping, and obviously I don't condone that. Now, one of his teammates explained bonking as, imagine a car. Now, it doesn't matter how fast or sort of standard your car is. You could be in a Ferrari or you could be in sort of a family Honda. Once that car runs out of petrol, it stops regardless. And that's the same with human beings. It doesn't matter how fit you are, how good you are. Once your body is depleted, you're done, you're toast. And that ultimately happened to Lance in one of the stages of the Tour de France. Now, Lance actually had insane power up the hills and longer sustained power efforts within this race, which is pretty diverse and incredible for an athlete to have this sort of broad spectrum of cycling skills, so to speak. But ultimately, he was left behind, as you can see on the screen now, by Zurich, and I'm not sure who the other guy was. And he was just unable to stay with him. It didn't matter how much he wanted it or how mentally sort of determined and strong he was, his body just wouldn't allow him to do it. And this ultimately put him two minutes down from the front at the finish line. A true bonk on the bike, though, could actually be be incredibly dangerous because unlike in running or triathlon if you bonk out and you collapse on the floor it's not the end of the world but if you are on your bike and you're falling off at higher speeds yeah let's just say it's probably not the best thing to happen and then it's probably not the bonk you're worried about and more the damage you're going to get from actually falling and collapsing off your bike at those higher speeds all in all though i think it's pretty clear that the bonk is just unavoidable when you're not fueling and you're not giving yourself the sort of energy reserves that you really do need in these longer distance events. Now, obviously they can happen in shorter events, but typically the big sort of traditional bonks are gonna happen in the longer endurance stuff. Now, if you enjoyed this video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel, because yeah, I thought it was pretty informative and there's some pretty juicy content coming your way. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.